during the season of Epiphany, which means Revelation, we think about seeing. To have something revealed is to have something made clear to us so that we see it. I wonder what God wants us to see today. I call this painting here, propped against the altar, the Three Kings. They're placed just beneath the manger scene, very appropriately. The Three Kings, or Magi, were also seers. What did they see? What do you notice in the painting? I'll give you a few moments to think about that. They're different. They're different. Yes, they are. Quite different. Totally different personalities. What about their eyes? Yes, their eyes are looking in the same direction. And what about their body language? Going in the same direction. Yes, their arms are around each other. They are following a common vision together. There's a lot of bright color around them. You probably noticed that as well. As the light from the sky shines on them, they saw a star and knew how to understand what that star meant. Astronomers now believe it was probably a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, such as appeared in the sky just before Christmas last year. But the Magi knew more because they could interpret further meanings to such an appearance in the sky and were able to follow it to Jesus. They saw the star as a guiding light to Jesus. They traveled a long way to meet this one who was born to be king of the Jews what I know, but you don't, is that these three young men, I've called Magi, are attending a wedding. That's why they're all dressed up. In their best clothes. In what Papua New Guineans call bilas. A good marriage has these elements that we've talked about present as well. In a couple, both are very different from one another. But they look in the same direction, following a common vision together. A vision that for Christians is focused on Jesus and takes them safely by his light to where they're meant to be, the marriage supper of the Lamb. In the process, they get to know Jesus better than they know anyone else. Marriage is about knowing someone better than you've ever known anyone before. But it is a mutual knowing, otherwise it's not really a marriage. A marriage is not one-sided, it takes two people, or in the case of Christian marriage, Three. Let God come between you and you will be closer to one another than you could ever have imagined. And how do you get to know someone? They reveal themselves to you. You can't force them. 
so that you know them. That's what Jesus always does. He faithfully reveals himself to us, and through him, we know God in the flesh. But then, you need to pay attention to what's revealed. You need to see what's right under your nose. Jesus chose a wedding in a particular place called Cana, not far from his hometown Nazareth, to reveal something about himself. What did you notice? What did you see revealed about Jesus in our story today? This is what I saw. But maybe you saw even more. I'll give you a moment afterwards to speak up if I've missed something. Jesus changed something. He changed water into wine. And not just any wine. The best. Secondly, Mary, Jesus' mother, was aware that he had the authority to do something about the shortage of wine when she said, do whatever he tells you. Maybe she had no idea what he was going to do. And maybe when we obey Jesus, we have no idea what the outcome is going to be. And maybe what he asks may seem a bit strange. Thirdly, only the servants, not the powerful, and the disciples, not the powerful, knew what Jesus had done. Nevertheless, the passage tells us that he thus revealed his glory. And his disciples put their faith in him. He deigned to reveal his glory to the least important. Did anyone notice anything else? Well, I think that's quite a lot already, don't you? Jesus loves to reveal his glory to people like you and people like me. Ordinary people. Jesus changed something as those who followed him obeyed him. But they did have to obey him. So, Jesus revealed to us that God is a God who transforms. Jesus is in the business of changing things. And Jesus can change and wants to change us. And another thing, when God changes us, he changes us into the very best of our kind. Just like Jesus did the wine, the best. And who are we to deserve being changed in such a marvelous way? We are the bride, together, like the three magi, side by side, united in a common vision, a vision of Jesus, the light of the world. Let's open ourselves up to the one who already knows us as he reveals himself so that we can know him. Jesus loves marriage. He loves
loves marriage because he loves his bride. And that means us. That means you and me. Amen.
for those unable to be with us. In your mercy, hear our prayer, O oh Lord. We pray for a troubled situation in our world. Of course, in front of us all, there's COVID, there are many, many other troubles, economic troubles, political troubles, violence. In your mercy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Let us pray for those who are hurting because of this present situation. Many of you know that uh, we served in Sharjah in the Middle East before coming here, and uh, a message this week to say that many, many of the people in the church and there uh, and in, um, in the Gulf who have been working there for the Indian subcontinent finding have had to leave, families are in difficulty, and uh, there is a lot of pain. Remember others who are hurting and need our prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for God, someone who we find it hard to forgive or trust. Quietness offer them to God. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring ourselves to God that we might grow in generosity of spirit, clarity of mind, and warmth of affection. O Trinity of love, you have been with us at the world. With us till the world's end. You have been with us at our life's shedding. Be with us till the world's end. You have been with us at the sun's rising. Be with us till the world's end. Amen. And so as we come to communion this morning, Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace to you from God, who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us love. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. At this point, we would have had
as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. And when they turn away and rebel, your love remains steadfast. And from them you raised up Jesus our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, in the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this only. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice may be once for all on the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May it be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple for your glory. And bring us at the last of all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in you, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 